Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head over to Dunfermline and Fife once again, the ancient capital of Scotland in fact, and we're going to have a taste of another beer from De Bruce Brewery, named of course after the famous Scottish King Robert the Bruce. And this beer is called Guardian Stout, which obviously is a reference to his status as the Guardian of Scotland. He took it over of course from William Morey and William Wallace, so this is a very nice beer in fact. I've tried this on tap in the brewery quite a few times so this one should be a very nice review to do for you on the channel today so quite glad I finally got around to doing it but anyway as is usual with my beer reviews then I'll take you through a very brief history of the brewery it will only be a minute or two long and I'll also tell you a bit about Robert the Bruce as well but if you want to get straight to the tasting just fast forward the brewery website's in the video description for you below along with a link to my other reviews that I've done from the Bruce Brewery before and I'll also add some more to that in the near future and please also like my Facebook page and feel free to add me as a friend on Untapped. As I said, all those links are in the video description for you below. But anyway, as I said before, the De Bruce Brewery is based in Dunfermline in Fife and it was opened in 2011 by Dave Austin and Douglas Ross. And Douglas Ross, of course, is also associated with the Bridge of Allen Brew House in Bridge of Allen, close to Stirling. But David had been a wines and spirits manager at the famous Glen Eagles Hotel for about 10 years and he also worked for the Rocco Hotel Group as well. But after being made redundant three times, he decided to go out alone and he opened up the now quite well known Rubens Cafe in the centre of Dunfermline in 2009. He named it after his son in fact but the idea behind this was to have an independent coffee shop to compete with the likes of Costa and Starbucks in Dunfermline but later in 2011 he also opened up a wine and spirits shop next door and he soon realised though that there were no local beers from Dunfermline that he could sell there so at this point he actually decided to team up with Douglas Ross from Bridge of Allen Brewhouse and they started to develop the De Bruce range of beers. So the first of these beers was produced in 2009 and that was actually at the Blondale which you can still get in the brew house today so that's quite a nice one actually so I would say check it out. But Dave and Douglas opened the brewery in Dunfermline, spelled in the same way that the, the De Bruce is spelled on the label incidentally. They opened this up in Dunfermline on Canmore Street in November 2011 and it's a restaurant and bar and the microbrewery is in the basement and this produces about a thousand litres of beer per week and they also brew some of their, uh, their kind of bigger sellers beers if you like at the uh, the Black Wolf Brewery in Throsk near Stirling as well but they offer tours of the brewery as well and you can eat some nice meals and things so do go and check out the brewery on Canmore Street in Dunfermline it's just along from the park actually and the Alhambra Theatre if I remember correctly but very very nice restaurant so definitely worth checking out but today they do actually have quite a few different beers all of which are available on tap of course so you have the Ancestral IPA the Blonde Ale the Declaration 90 Shilling which is a traditional Scotch Ale that's quite a nice one actually. There's the Guardian Stout, this guy here, the Nut Brown Ale which is another favourite of mine and also the Scottish Lager as well and they do have an Oatmeal Stout too. But interestingly enough you can get a raspberry lager and I believe the raspberries that they use to brew that one are actually sourced locally so you can get a truly local Dunfermline cider as well which is quite interesting so as I say do go and check out the brewery in Dunfermline quite a nice place to go and stop off if you do find yourself passing through but anyway let's get on to the tasting of this beer itself as I told you at the start of the video the brewery of course is named after Robert the Bruce but the reason it's called De Bruce is because Robert the Bruce was half Gaelic and half half um, French actually and this was the big thing the the Celtic countries Scotland and Ireland were allied with the French against the English because England basically kept trying to invade Scotland in the the late 13th and early 14th century but it didn't stop there of course but Robert the Bruce is very famous for having been the king that um, secured Scottish independence at the Battle of Bannockburn in 1314 and he was the king of Scotland from 1306 to 1329 but um, in Dunfermline you can actually go into Dunfermline Abbey and Robert the Bruce is in in a marble cast, a marble sort of case, if you like, underneath the parapet in the uh, in the church. And basically, the idea behind this was that Robert the Bruce or the, any of the kings of Scotland were the people's representative to God. So Robert the Bruce's body is under the the minister's parapet, so he is under God. the The Scottish monarchy was quite different from the English monarchy in that regard. The king was chosen to be the representative of the people rather than kind of inheriting the position, if you like. But Robert the Bruce is a very, very interesting character and if you know anything about him, you'll actually know that um, he was terrified for the whole of his reign of going to hell basically. So there's a story that he went and basically lived in a cave and saw a spider weaving its web. So this is why the De Bruce Brewery used the spider on their, uh, their labels here. You can just see it there. 
So it's quite an interesting story, but there's many interesting stories about Rob the Bruce. But the funny thing is, a lot of these things you'll read and think they're really quite random and probably not true. But the, the majority of them are actually, which is, is really quite interesting. But I think the spider one is one that is um, that they're not quite sure about. So, But it's quite an interesting story nonetheless. So just to read the little bit of the blurb on the side, it says, The legend of brews. This beer has been created in memory of a long-forgotten brewing history in the ancient capital of Scotland. Dunfermline once boasted seven brews breweries. The earliest records of brewing date from the 1490s with Moni Rodis Brewery near Netherton and among others the Dunfermline Brewery ceased operating in 1898 making an end to over 400 years of brewing tradition in the town. With a nod to the past we celebrate those brave brewers with this unique beer in their honour and this is the De Bruce Brewery and it tells you on the side as well the Guardian Stout has deep notes of coffee, chocolate and roasted barley to make this stout rich and fulfilling. Craft microbreweries in the ancient capitals of of Scotland so looks very nice and as I said with the declaration uh, 90 shilling these ones all have the sort of uh, nice rich colours of them and the rich these kind of um, dark rich colours if you like were a sort of symbol of wealth and this is why the kings and queens always had these really nice quite um, elaborately dyed um, th like dyed tapestries and things so purple was a real sign of wealth and so was the kind of navy uh, royal blue as well but it looks very nice you can see the lion rampant just on the crest on the bottom there this nice sort of stone thing and you can see the crown of Robert the Bruce too but the interesting story about Robert the Bruce's body is that they were actually renovating Dunfermline Abbey I believe around 1900 and uh, they actually the workers in the basement of this dug up this cask and they found Robert the Bruce's body inside having been lost for centuries so it was taken away to Glasgow University and uh, built up and modelled and they determined that this was actually Robert the Bruce so quite an interesting story behind that so as I say do go and check out Dunfermline the De Bruce Brewery and of course Dunfermline Abbey as well do check it out but this guy comes in at 4.5% there was a nice smoky opening when it opened it up there and as you would expect with a stout it's pouring a very nice kind of dark rosewoody mahogany colour so it should be a very nice one for us to try. As I say, I've tried it on tap before and it is really quite nice. The trademark of the De Bruce Brewery I've found is the nice sort of bready malt base that these beers have. So I'm sure this one will be no different in the bottle. So as you can see, it's poured a nice rosewood mahogany colour. It's almost the same colour as Coca-Cola actually, but you've got a nice two finger or a finger and a half of a frothy beige tan head on there. It looks very nice actually. Some big bubbles of carbonation just sticking towards the side of the glass, but some little bubbles going up towards the bottom of that head there. Very, very attractive looking beer. Just because it's so dark, you can't see any transparency through it, but I'm sure if it was a bit lighter, you would see it, but very attractive looking beer nonetheless. So in terms of the aroma from this one, you've got a nice dark roasted coffee malt aroma, which is exactly what you would expect from a stout beer. There is a bit of a, a kind of nutty flavour to this one as well or nutty aroma sorry you can definitely pick up a big sort of brown bready characteristic and there's some nutty elements in, uh, mixed in there some cereally presents the sort of barley elements and you can pick up a little bit of sweeter chocolate coming out of it too particularly when you, you kind of sugar it up a bit like this but a nice roasted coffee aroma coming out of this one so very very nice smelling beer actually has all the elements you would expect of the stout nice little bit of coffee some sweet chocolate big kind of brown bready note and some cereally uh, dryness in there too quite like brown bread in fact and some nutty elements and woody uh, aromas mixed in there so without further ado let's get stuck in to the uh, the Guardian Stout from De Bruce Brewery in Dunfermline named after Robert the Bruce Slanja so that's quite interesting actually So with this one, you've got a nice dark brown bready malt base on this one and that just blankets the middle of your tongue there. And it's quite a nice brown bready sort of cereally flavour and you get a bit of cereal dryness just as your your tongue kind of arches like this, you're getting a kind of brown, uh, a brown bready thing that just blankets the middle of the palate there and you get some cereal dryness just on the arches of your tongue there. There's a bit of earthy hop character at the very back corners of your palate too actually.
But yeah, there's some sweet kind of um, dark chocolate in there too. That just builds up on the middle of the palate, but a nice dark roasted coffee bitterness on this one. It's actually very, very smooth. That's the thing you'll find with these beers. As I say, the De Bruce Brewery beers have a really nice, quite um, prominent brown bready malt base and you can feel that just blanket in the middle of your palate and these other malty flavours just come in on top of that. And it really is quite nice in fact. Um, so just on top of that you've got a nice roasted coffee bitter character, some cereal character in there on top as well. It's kind of a um, sort of barley-ish flavour actually. And there is a sort of nutty uh, almost woody flavour actually infused in with that nice uh, malt base in the middle of your tongue there. It's, it's, it's quite interesting actually, it's a bit more complex in the in the bottle this one that is on the tap in fact. The tap one feels a good bit creamier, this is a little bit lighter and has a little bit more of the fruity character in it I think, but a very very nice beer nonetheless. But yeah it's a very smooth and really quite easy drinking stout in fact. As I say, a nice brown bready uh, blanket just across the middle of your tongue, some cereal dryness just uh, on top of that and a nice roasted coffee bitterness too. You can pick up in the very middle of your tongue some kind of um, of the, the slightly sweeter dark chocolate flavours just as you go right down the middle of the palate. Really quite nicely done and there's a nice earthy hop character that just spreads towards the very front of the palate too. That's quite an interesting quirk on the beer actually. You usually just get a sort of um, earthy earthy character to the beer in the very back corners but this one spreads a little bit further around the palate. If you go just the the just behind the very kind of front curve of the tongue there you're getting a nice bit just a slight fruity ester in there too. It's actually a bit sharper this one. I think it's more it's a bit sharper than the Declaration 90 Shilling. To me it comes across as being a bit more of a, a raisiny note rather than a figgy note as was uh, was seen in the Declaration beer. Yeah, I would say that it's quite mild, um, this fruity character, but I do think that the fruity esters in this beer are a little bit sharper than the uh, than the Scotch than the ones in the Scotch ale. Where it's definitely quite an interesting beer, this one. So do check it out if you go and uh, and you if you do go to Dunfermline and visit the brewery. I think this one it's quite interesting just the difference between this one and the tap because I don't remember such a sharp um, raisiny flavour on this one in comparison with the, the tap version. The tap version was more of a figgy uh, flavour rather than a raisiny one. But in terms of the, the mouthfeel of this beer, it is mid-body definitely. There's a nice smooth carbonation to this one and it does have some creamy character. As I say though, on tap the creamy character is a little bit more pronounced. But there's a nice roasty bitterness to this one that continues into the aftertaste. And you get a bit of the sweeter chocolate and things as you go through the flavour of this beer too. So there is a bit of a a malty sweetness to the beer but there's a nice slightly juicy fruity ester coming out and as I say I think it's a little bit sharper than the uh, the declaration stout and in the bottle in comparison to the uh, the tap as well this is more of a raisiny ester coming out of this one but there's a little bit of juicy character just behind the very front of the tongue too but a nice earthy hop dryness around the edge of the palate as well so quite an interesting beer this so I would say it definitely have a go of it it is, it's, the, the De Bruce Brewery beers are quite, they're quite traditional in their feel if you like. A lot of the old Scottish beers have a nice big brown bready malt base and then you get these really nice flavours infused to them as well. So the De Bruce Brewery really brew in quite a traditional style in my opinion and the beers are very good. So I would recommend that you do give them a go if you get the chance. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this beer review. It's been really cool to return to De Bruce Brewery once again. So as I say, do go and check them out if you find yourself in Dunfermline. There's some really interesting history in the town so if you're visiting from abroad do go and check out the town and see um, Robert the Bruce in Dunfermline Abbey as well and go and check out the, the, the Bruce Brewery and have some of their food too but I hope you've enjoyed this beer review let me know in the comments section your own thoughts on this beer if you do happen to have tried it yourself always interesting to read them in the meantime, until my next review, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. I'm sure I'll return to De Bruce Brewery in the fairly near future. So until my next review, and until my next De Bruce Brewery review as well, slange you for now and drink a lot of nice beers. Cheers.